One of the biggest issues I see people run into when they're going off-road with a trailer is turning around. It can turn into a bigger deal than it needs to be. But lucky for us, there's a tool for that. Once we complete this trailer build, we're going to be taking it all over the place with multiple vehicles. There is no doubt I'm going to get stuck multiple times in the snow, in the mud, whatever the situation may be. And we need a big enough and powerful enough winch to be able to pull out the trailer and my tow vehicle all at once. And I know that this series is based on the idea of building one of these on a budget, but I think it's pretty hard to argue at this point that there's a better deal out there than these Apex 12K winches from Harbor Freight. I'm starting with a universal winch mounting plate that I got from Harbor Freight, and I cannot stress how strong this has to be back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate this winch mount into basically what is the spine of the trailer. This beam goes from the rear all the way up to the actual hitch connection, um, and we're gonna turn this also into a bumper. So once we mount it to this spine, it's gonna be pretty dang strong, and then once we mount it into the sides and create a bumper out of it, it's not coming off of this trailer. Since this winch is kind of an afterthought, we're gonna run into some real problems today trying to get this to fit correctly. So for that reason, I'm gonna make this a bolt-on application instead of a weld-on because if I put something on it and then later on I decide that it didn't work the way I wanted it to or I could think of a better way to do it, I love the flexibility to be able to unbolt the bumper and the winch and make something else from scratch that might work on this build a little bit better. If you're familiar with my channel at all, you know that I love tube work. So I broke up my friend Bender here, and now we are going to add some tube, because <laughs> I, I got tube fenders, I plan to do a bunch of tube on the front of this thing, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm thinking maybe a 45, like right there. project like this is perfect for pushing creativity. I've got no plan, I haven't drawn anything out, but I know what kinds of material sizes and thicknesses I like to use typically and what kind of stuff I have laying around. So for this lower tube, I'm gonna use .120 wall tubing because it's gonna be taking an impact here or there and having the thicker wall is gonna help it stay durable. And then any other tube that we add for structural integrity or even just for flare, we're gonna make that out of 095 in order to help keep the weight down. This winch is gonna be capable of generating a lot of force of whatever it's mounted to. So like I said before, this has to be super strong. My strategy here is to have multiple contact points over a broad range of the trailer to make sure that there's not too much force on one area or another. 
because of the way we're gonna design this bumper, it's gonna be pretty lightweight and it's gonna be extremely strong just because of the way that it attaches in multiple locations to the trailer. Obviously the most important and biggest challenge of this entire project is just to make as much strength as light as possible. And I think that we're gonna strike a pretty good balance on that today. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are on something like this. It's a little wild. There's nothing else like it out there. Um, clearly, I didn't pull inspiration from another trailer, right? Um, I don't know how I'm gonna build this stuff when I come out here genuinely, and you watched it uh, manifest itself just like I did. We, we upgraded our fair lead, as you can see, to our toe points fair lead. This is something we did in partnership with Yankum Ropes. It's 100% made in America. We sell them on our website, Dirt Lifestyle, thedirtlifestyle.com. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check it out. The Cliff Notes version of why you would do this is you can eliminate your hook altogether. So in the next video, we'll cut out the steel that's uh, on the end of this loop, and then we'll just take the loop, tuck it right there. There's no hook sticking out. There's no more metal involved at all. We'll just use this, hook it to a strap with a soft shackle, it's as safe as it gets and as clean as it gets. So the next thing I wanna work on is gonna be a door up here in the middle. I wanna work on some flat surfaces on the outside to start mounting some lights. And uh, we'll see how much farther we can get this week in this video. builder bushings for hinges just like I did on the front door of this trailer. The only exception is I ordered these builder bushings from Barnes four wheel drive and it comes as a kit and it's a lot easier than what I did with just piecing random stuff together that I had laying around the shop. Look how much better that looks with a door. Oh, I love it. Th this trailer is slowly but surely becoming more and more complete, and it just gets me very excited to get this thing on the trail. For those of you who are wondering, I'm thinking two more weeks of work. So two more episodes, and I believe this will be 100% trail ready. We still have a ton of work to do, clearly, but if I could have two solid weeks of working on the trailer, this could finally be ready to rock and roll. Unfortunately, I need to get this thing out of here. I ran out of time. This video is going live tomorrow morning, and then as soon as the video goes live, I need to bring my wife's gladiator out here, and we're gonna do our first job on the new two-post lift. We're gonna do gears, we're gonna do axle trusses, we're gonna do everything we got at brakes, all that stuff on hers, get it ready for a big trip we're about to take to Arizona. So if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that other stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.